How you feeling today? You can stay standing for a moment. You feeling good? Wow. Lots of energy in this room today. Uh, hey, let's take a second. Obviously, we're here at Littleton today. But let's take a second to welcome all those joining us at Park Meadows, Arvada, Lakewood, all those joining us online. Also, Austin, Texas, Brussels, Belgium, and of course, all of our amazing men and women at God Behind Bars. Let's give it up for them. Love you guys. Hey, my name is Andrew Matrone, and I'm one of the young adults pastors and on the leadership team here at Red Rocks Church. And man, I come to you today with great expectation for what God's gonna do in this place. I promise you, I have given everything I have this week in prayer, in preparation, and I'm gonna give all that I have on this stage today. So I just ask that you give me the same. Okay, can you respond today with some passion that we're here today, that we made it through a really difficult year, but we're still here, and God has such a plan and a purpose for us. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm believing great things for today, I have great expectation, and Sean, our lead pastor, he asked me if I would preach this weekend, and I'm like, okay, uh, you want me to preach the first weekend of the new year after the world's worst year in history, okay, uh, you take the week off, I'll, I'll, I got this one, no pressure, uh, and so honestly, I'm like, I, I have felt a lot of pressure this week. I'm like, what on earth do you talk about, do you preach about? How do you lead a group of people um, through a season like this when we're into a new year after such a difficult year? And, and I was going through a lot of things, and, and as I do every time that I, that I preach, I spend a lot of time in prayer. I spend a lot of time fasting. I spend, spend a lot of time um, in the Word just trying to seek from God, God, what is it that you want me to deliver to your people to lead them? And I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke very clearly to me I feel like the Holy Spirit said, Andrew, I want you to lead them to search the Word of God like never before in 2021. I, I want you to lead them to search, to engage, to know the Word of God like never before. And because of that, I feel like a message like this today can relate with every single person. I believe that it's gonna resonate. I don't care if you've been a believer your entire life or this is your first time stepping foot in a church. I don't care how good or bad your 2020 was or the kind of goals you have for 2021. I don't care how righteous or how sinful, how rich or how poor, how close you feel to God or how far you feel from God. I believe this message today is gonna speak to you and challenge you and encourage you in a way that I believe that God wants to set before you in this next year. And so what I wanna talk about today, I wanna to talk about how the best thing you will do in 2021 is search the Word of God. The best thing, all other goals aside, the best thing that you will do in 2021 is to search the Word of God. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much. Um, God, you're so faithful. You've been faithful this entire year. God, your promises still stand. God, I pray, Lord, as we speak about the powerful Word of God, God, I pray that you'd speak to us, God, this Word that, that transcends um, all generations, that transcends all races. Lord God, I pray that it would speak to us in such a powerful way. God, we love you, we trust you. We ask all oh, your name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. You can hug someone's neck if you want, if they came from the same household, you know. Uh, my son Abram, he's five years old, and he has officially entered this stage of life where he asks this specific question over and over and over again, and over and over and over and over and over again. And the question is, why? My, that word, y'all, comes out of my son's mouth about a million times a day. It's either why or no, but I think why is winning out. Abram, quit messing with your sister. Why? Because she's smaller than you. Why? She can't defend herself. Why? Because she was born only nine months ago. Why? Because 18 months ago, dad brought mom home some chocolate and flowers. <laughs> Why? Abram, quit asking questions. There's some things you just don't need to know. My son, it's like it's built into the fabric of who he is. My son has this deep desire to know why. He takes nothing at face value. My son has to know why. And I think one of the most uh, basic human innate traits for any single one of us is to know why. We all just want to know why. Why is life this way? Why did this happen? Why does this happen? Why am I this way? And I think that the older you get, I think the more that this question just strengthens. 
I had a friend who sent me a video this week, and it was a video that was created by Google. And the title of the video was Year in Search 2020. Year in Search 2020. And it was a super cool narrated video that showcased what Google felt was the most profound search in 2020. You're interested, aren't you? The word that was searched by our world more than ever before in 2020 was the word why. The word that was searched in our world, not just Brussels, Belgium, not just the United States of America, but in the world, the word that was searched in our world more than ever before in 2020 was the word why. Millions and millions and millions of searches with the phrase starting why. Why can't I? Why does this? Why am I? Why did this? Why do people? Why? 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 And I asked myself, why are people asking why? And I think that the reason why people are asking this question right now is because in times of uncertainty, people seek understanding right? All of us do. And I think that our, our world is constantly searching. Our world has always been searching, will continue to search. But I think in times of uncertainty more than ever, our world seeks understanding. Our world is searching for meaning. Our world is searching for purpose. Our world is searching for hope. Our world is searching for answers to some of life's biggest questions. Why? And I think that this season has provided far more questions than it has had answers. And this is why I believe that the word of God has never been more attractive and relevant than this point in history right now. See, the reality is is that Google can't give you answers. Think about it. Google can... uh, Google can't give you answers. Google can only direct you to sources and people who can give you answers. See, the Word of God can't give you every single word, every single answer at face value, but it can direct you to the one who has all the answers. Amen? Listen, the Word of God can give you answers that no pastor, no blogger, no influencer, no Enneagram test, no author could ever give you. Listen, the Bible is the closest thing that you and I have to getting the questions that we have in our seasons of life answered. And I'm going to show you today how this word, if you engage with the word of God, might just give you the answers to your life that you have been deeply searching for in this season. Can I tell you a couple things about this book? Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate appreciate you. Yeah, you see, this book is no ordinary book. See, this book is actually a collection of books, 66 books to be exact. 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. This book was written by over 40 human authors, okay? This book was not written by God. It was written by human, flawed, broken people just like you and I. This book was written in within 1,500 years from the first word printed to the last word dotted. 1,500 years written by 40 different authors. This book was written in cities, in countries, on islands, in prisons, while traveling. The Old Testament was originally written in in Aramaic and Hebrew. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. The book, this book has been translated in over 3,500 different languages and counting. There are hundreds and hundreds of versions. In the English language alone, there are over 200 versions of this book. This book is made up of over 800,000 words, and for one setting, it would take someone 70 hours to read, 100 and 70 for some of y'all. Did you know that this book was the most shop is the most shoplifted book in the world? Did you know that this book was the first book ever printed in 1450 in Mainz, Germany by the Gutenberg Express? It has been said that almost 7 billion copies of this book have been sold worldwide. The next closest book is 900 million. 150 bu- uh, books are sold every minute, 150,000 a day, 55 million books of this sold every single year. The percentage of Americans who have at least one of these books sitting in their house, whether it was purchased, given to them, or stolen, is 92%. Over 300 million Americans have this book sitting in their home. Why? Why? (laughs) Why is it that billions of people not just Christians, but billions of people 
over thousands of years on every continent have purchased this book, downloaded the app, and have even stole this book. Why is it? I was thinking about it this week. Why have people, billions and billions of people over thousands of years, tried to engage with this book? And I believe that people engage with this book, whether Christian or not, because they have this deep hope that maybe, just maybe, this will be my connection to my creator. See, Ecclesiastes says that God has set the eternity on the hearts of all men, that every man, every woman wants to be connected to their creator. And maybe, just maybe, this book is my connection and can provide the answers to my life's biggest questions that I have desperately, desperately been looking and searching for. Listen, as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ, we believe that this is the inspired book of God, and it's his way of connecting, communicating, challenging, encouraging, and inspiring his people. Understand something. This Bible is not just history. This Bible is not just fantasy. This Bible is not just cool stories or somebody's opinions. This Bible is the spoken word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, all scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God-breathed, useful for teaching and training so that you, God can set you up to go down the path and lead the path that he has set before you. Whether you believe it or not, God is using this word to speak to you and I, but if we don't engage with this word, this word won't engage with us. See, I believe that according to scripture, the word of God does a couple of things for us. If you're taking notes, I'm going I'm to just give you three thoughts that the word of God does for us. The first thing I believe that the word of God does for, for you and I is the word guides you. It guides you. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. Another version says, revelation of your word makes my path clear. In other words, the more that I read it, the more that God reveals. The more that God reveals, the more that my path becomes clear. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Have you ever tried to do something in the pitch black? I'm talking about like the pitch black. Like you can't, you can't see anything, right? It's kind of scary. You either just stand there and do nothing, or if you start walking, you know you're going to hit something, right? I, I, have you ever walked into your kid's room middle of the night to check on them, step on a Lego, and the words that come out of your mouth, you did not know were within inside your soul? <laughs> it's dangerous to try to navigate when it's pitch black. Uh, about a year ago, my, my son went through another phase. Sorry, I'm just using my son as every example. I'll probably use a couple more. Uh, he went through a phase of life, a lot of phases for this five-year-old child. But he went through this phase of life where he loved putting stuff on top of his head and walking around the house. I don't get it. And his choice was always like a, a box. He loved putting boxes on his head uh, or, or, or like a blanket like this. And he loved just putting stuff on his head and just walking around like this. I don't know, it's exhilarating to him. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But one day, me and my wife, was before our daughter was born, we were sitting in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, we hear this loud thud, and my son erupts in, in tears. So we go running in there, and, and all of a sudden, like, I see my son, just he's crying, sitting on the ground, completely dejected, and there's a box on his head. I'm like, you are your mother's child. Lord, Lord help this kid. And, and, and so I go to Abram, I'm like, hey, buddy, like, you can't. You can't, what are you doing? Like, you can't, you can't do that, son. I'm like, get, get, give me the box. He's like, no, 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 don't take the box. I want the box on my head. Let me have the box on my head. I'm like, okay, you can have the box on your head. And so literally what we did is he had the box on his head, and I held his hand and navigated him around the house so that he didn't hit his face on the wall anymore. And all he could see was his little, little feet in front of him. You see, the reality is that we live in a really dark world. We live in a world where there's a lot of confusion. We live in a world where there's a lot of questions and not many answers. Where do I go? What do I do? And I believe that God's word is a source of illumination and guidance, that the word of God is his way of holding our hand and helping us navigate through this very dark and confusing world in this season of life. Listen, the word of God, it guides us through difficult circumstances. 
The, the, the word of God, uh, it guides us through relational issues, marital issues, financial issues, career issues. The word of God helps us navigate confusing times. If you go back to that 2 Timothy 3, another version of it says the word of God, it'll empower you by its instruction and correction and give you strength to take the what? right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness that the word of god was god breathed and inspired to empower you to give you strength so that you can follow the path that god has set before you i may not know what's in front of me or ahead of me but at least i know who is guiding me amen and so i've had a lot of people as being a youth pastor for for about nine years and being a young adult pastor for a while i get a lot of questions of hey andrew how do you know if god is guiding guiding you or speaking to you in the Word of God? Maybe you've had that question. Okay, I, I agree. As a Christian, I should probably read the Word, and, and, and there are some things that stick out to me, but how, how do I know that God is actually guiding me and speaking to me through His Word? I heard our lead pastor, Sean Johnson, say one time, he said, in the Word of God, God sometimes shouts, and then sometimes God whispers. Sometimes God shouts, and sometimes God whispers. So let, let me break this down for you. Sometimes God shouts. In, in, in other words, God says things loud and clear. He's not yelling at you, but he's saying things that are loud and clear in, in plain sight for you to see. For example, you're struggling with some hatred towards someone. You're having a difficult time forgiving. Should I forgive this person? Well, it says loud and clear, forgive as Christ has forgiven you. I'm having some trouble with some substance stuff, and, and, and I like to go out and I drink. Is it okay for me to get drunk? The scripture says loud and clear, do not give in to drunkenness. Can I date someone who is not a believer? Well, Corinthians says pretty loud and clear that do not be yoked with someone who is an unbeliever. My wife is driving me crazy. I don't know what to do right now. Well, the Bible says loud and clear, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I have a lot of political and racial hatred inside my heart. I'm not sure what to do. Scripture says loud and clear, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Listen, there are things that God has been and will continue continue to speak to you that is loud and clear in the word of God. But if you are not searching it on your own, what you'll do is you'll just take somebody else's opinions or somebody else's convictions for it. Listen, at some point as believers, we have, have, we have to open up the word of God. We have to see what God is saying and allow God to speak to us and draw a line in the sand for our own convictions and our own beliefs. Like for the love of God, maybe for a, for a season of life, quit putting, put down the book that talks about God and open up the book that is about God, right? Maybe for a moment, quit, quit looking at the blog and the people on Instagram and, and basing your convictions based off of their opinions, amen? And so sometimes God shouts, but also I believe that sometimes God whispers, this is different. Sometimes God whispers, and, and what I mean by this is that sometimes God speaks to the intimate, uh, intimate parts of, of your soul, where, where, where you're reading, and, and it's not something that's just loud and clear, but it just sticks out to you differently. Right? Like maybe you have some questions in life where you're saying, what job should I take? Should I continue to date this person? Should I do this business transaction? Should I go to this school or this school? I've never read in the Bible where it says, hey, pick that school. I, I, I've never read in the Bible that it says, hey, date that guy, not that one. For the love of God, not that one, date this one. I, I've, I've never seen it, but have you ever just been, been reading, like in the quietness of, 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 of your house, and, and you're just reading, and, and you read a passage that maybe you've read a million different times, but then all of a sudden you read it this one time, and it just jumps out of the page, and it speaks to your soul very differently? Or have you ever been sitting in a service like this and a pastor begins to read a scripture and all of a sudden you begin weeping and the person sitting next to you is like, what's wrong with them? We're in Leviticus right now. Like what? What on earth? But that's God whispering to the intimate parts of your soul. That sometimes it doesn't make sense. More times than not, I would say that God, when I'm reading the word of God, that God whispers to me. Sometimes God shouts, sometimes God whispers, but the Bible, it helps us decipher right or wrong. It gives us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. 
There's a lot of things in this life trying to take you off path, trying to distract you. But the word of God is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto my path. Listen, the Bible, what it does is we're going all these different directions. People are saying all these different things. What the Bible does is it, is it puts you back on focus. It gives you vision and it guides you for the season of life that you're in. Amen. So first, the, the word of God, it is a guide. It guides you. Second thing I believe the word of God does is it defends you. It defends you. Ephesians 6 is, is the famous scripture about the, the armor of God. I want to read just a couple of passages, and we'll paraphrase a little bit. But it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Underline that. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the what? spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And because of that, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, it's not, it's not if, it's when, you will be able to stand your ground. And then it gives a couple of the armor of God, the pieces. And then the last line it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the what? Word of God. See, understanding the word of God will help you fight off the words of the enemy. Can, 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 I, can I remind you today of something that, that's um, extremely important, whether believer or non-believer, is for you to understand that you are in the middle of a spiritual warfare, that the enemy is doing everything he can to take you out, that there is a war waging on for your soul, for your mind, between heaven and hell. You are in the middle of a spiritual battle. Listen, the battles that you fight right now are not physical battles. Okay, Paul says it. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. The enemy wants you to think that your struggle is against flesh and blood, so you fight in the flesh and blood. So you fight people, you fight your spouse, you fight your kids. You fight other things. No, he wants you to believe that your fight is between flesh and blood. But Paul says, no, 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 no. He says it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces. Listen, the battles that you fight are not physical, so you cannot fight them with physical weapons. You are in spiritual warfare, therefore you need spiritual weapons. Listen, think about this. Where, where do most of your battles take place? Like the inception of them, they take place in, in your mind, right? Uh, lust, greed, pride, anxiety, doubt, stress. Most things that you and I struggle with are just manifestations of things that first started in our mind, right? And the Bible defends the mind. How does the Bible defend the mind? By speaking truth. Speaking truth. What the Bible does is it refocuses our attention by putting our thoughts back into its rightful place. All these things going on, all these opinions, all these feelings internally and externally, what the Bible does is it refocuses your attention and puts the thoughts back in its rightful place. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we demolish, that's a powerful word, somebody, come on, we demolish, nothing left, we flatten it, demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, the word of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's how we demolish strongholds in our life, by the word of God. And this is how it plays out. It's pretty simple in theory. I'm believing, I'm feeling this, but the word of God says this. I'm believing this about myself and my worth and my purpose. I'm, I'm believing this about my situation, about my marriage, my finances, but the word of God speaks this. Listen, can I tell you, just remind you, I know that we're all adults in here, but can I remind you that your thoughts lie to you? What? All the things that I think about myself aren't all true? Wow, I'm so glad I came to church today. Listen, your thoughts can lie. Your feelings can lie. The Bible even says your heart is deceitful. Your heart can lie. The Bible always refocuses you and brings you back to truth. And the truth will what? Set you free. Amen. Listen, there are several pieces in that Ephesians 6. Go read it for yourself because I think it's so powerful as you jump into this year. There, there are several pieces of, of, of God's armor that are for uh, protection, but there's only one weapon of offense 
that is provided. And it's a sword. It's a sword. If, if, if we go back to that, it says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word is a sword. It's a weapon. It's meant to fight off. It's meant to kill. It's meant to attack. The word of God is an indispensable weapon in your daily fight, in your soul, and in your mind. You have to engage with the word of God because the word of God was set in place to defend you, to be a sword, a weapon. Listen, even Jesus used the word of God, scripture, to fight off the enemy. Jesus was baptized, and before he started his, his ministry at 30 years old, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. And every time the enemy came to Jesus to tempt him, Jesus wasn't throwing hands. No, no, no. Jesus, what did he do? He quoted scripture. He quoted the truth of God. He quoted the word of God, and guess what happened? It says the enemy flee. The enemy fleed him. Listen, the enemy is going to throw a lot of stuff at you this year. If you're surprised by that, look at the year that just happened. <laughs> the enemy's going to throw a lot of stuff. He's going to throw everything he has at your marriage. Okay, married people sitting in here. If the enemy could break your marriage, break your family, your children, the enemy is going to throw everything he can at, at your career, at your purpose. That's why you and I have to be so grounded in the word of God. And remember that the truth of God always supersedes the lies of the enemy. Amen. The word of God, it guides you. It defends you. In the word of God, I believe this is the most powerful one. I believe the word of God, it transforms you. This is going to be a good one. Oh, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active. Underline that if you're taking notes. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and of the spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Understand something. This isn't just some dormant book. That this book is alive and it's discerning your thoughts and the intentions of your heart. Understand something. You don't just read the word of God. The word of God reads you. I want you to think about that every time that you open up this word. That you're not just reading the word of God. That the word of God is actually reading you. You see, the word of God, it takes you and your situation into account. The word of God takes your history, your background, your baggage, your sin patterns, your personality. It takes all of those into account, and it reads you as you read the word. Listen, you know the amount of times that me and my wife have gotten in a fight, and then I'll, I'll go to work to work on a sermon, and I'll open up the word to try to see what God wants me to tell you guys, and God's speaking to me the whole time about how prideful I was, and five minutes later, I'm texting my wife being like, sorry, babe. It's like God's like, mm-mm. You open this thing up, I'm going to speak to you. Apologize to your wife. The, the, the amount of times in, in, my, in my life that I've been walking in anger or lust or unforgiveness or stress, and, and then I finally open up the word of God and God speaks directly and it leads me to a place of repentance. Listen, when you read the word of God, it brings the things in your life to light because nothing can be hidden before God. I can't tell you how many times I haven't opened up this word because I know exactly what God is about to speak to me and I ain't here for it yet. You don't just read the Bible. The Bible reads you. Listen, the word of God, it exposes our weaknesses in unbelief. It speaks to the lack in our souls. It convicts our hearts and our souls like the world cannot convict. Uh, David Uzik, he's a famous commentator. He says, God's word diagnoses the conditions of a man with a surgeon's precision. It lays open our heart and discerns our spiritual health. Can I remind you that we don't just read the word of God for intellectual knowledge? We don't just read the word of God for biblical facts. 
Let me tell you, I wrote these things in my note. These are the things, the reason why we read the word of God, that the word of God, it brings health and fruitfulness. The word of God has healing power, the power over oppression. The word of God, it cleanses us. It's a counselor. It's a source of strength. The word of God, it imparts life and wisdom. When hidden in our hearts, it helps us stay from sin. The word of God has power and authority over demonic powers. That the word of God is built to sanctify us and it builds our faith. The word of God is not dead. The word of God is alive and active. Amen. Can I caution you, though, before you really dive into this word? Because some of you are like, I'm going to do it. This year is the word, the year that I searched the word of God. Let me caution you, though. This Bible can change the trajectory of your life. This Bible can change the trajectory of your finances could change the trajectory of the generations behind you. This Bible could change the trajectory of your career. You thought you were going one way. Mm -mm. Change the trajectory of the state that you might be moving to or the house that you think that you're going to buy. The Word of God can change the trajectory of your life. You know why? Because this is not just any book that you read. You're reading Jesus, who is the Word, and Jesus is about transformation. So reading the Word of God. It guides you, it defends you, it transforms you. See, I've learned over and over and over again in my life my deep need for the Word of God. And I think that the, the older that I've gotten and the more mature that I've gotten in my faith, still very immature, but working on it, the more mature that I've gotten in my faith, I just more and more see my deep need for the Word of God. I've realized in this season of life, as me and my wife were going on a decade of marriage and having kids and trying to figure out this life and, and trying to lead people and do all the things, that I'm just not strong enough to always make the right decision. I'm not strong enough to always have the right attitude. I'm not strong enough to always know what to do and where to go. I need to be grounded in the Word of God more than ever before. Listen, and because of this, almost every morning, not every morning, I, I, I miss some because I'm tired and I'm lazy, but almost every morning before I spend time in the world, I spend time in the Word. I have to. Before I spend time in the world and open up my phone and get into all the apps and all the things, I have to spend time in the Word. You see, the world is filled with a lot of noise, right? <laughs> Maybe more than ever. And, and, and not, not even that it's all negative noise. But, 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 but the world is filled with you wake up and there's slacks and emails and texts and social media and checking your, your stocks and all the things. Like there are, the, the world is filled with a lot of noise. There's a lot of distractions in this world, a lot of opinions, and you get to decide every single day the noise that you allow to infiltrate your heart and your soul. Isn't it funny how the scripture says that God's mercies are new every single morning, that every single morning we have an opportunity to wake up and engage with the word of God and engage with his new mercies. But what do we do? We jump into Instagram and engage with comparison. Like we have such an amazing opportunity every morning to experience the new mercies and the strength and confidence that comes by knowing and engaging with the word of God. Listen, don't this year, can I encourage you to not let the noise of this world outweigh the voice of God? Can you fight to not let the noise of this world outweigh the voice of God? A lot of noise around you, but can you allow the voice of God to supersede any voice of man? Can you allow the, the word of God to be the ultimate authority in your life? Well, how do I do that? That sounds awesome, Andrew. Thank you. How do I do that? Well, Colossians 3.16, I think, makes it pretty simple. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In other words, read it, study it, know it, search the word of God. Let the word of God become a part of you. Let, let, it, let it dwell within you richly. Why? Because God has given us many tools to fight. The Bible is not the only tool the Lord gives us. The Lord gives us uh, worship. He gives us prayer. He gives us community. He gives us the, the Holy Spirit. There are many tools that the Lord has given us, but I believe that the Word of God is one of the greatest tools that we can have to guide us, to defend us, and transform us. Amen. 
Ben, you can come on up. I had this, this moment this week, and it, it, was, it was a powerful moment. I, I, I'll be honest that I don't have uh, a ton of moments th- throughout my weeks where I just feel like the Holy Spirit just, just like rushes over me. Every, every once in a while I have those moments, and I had one yesterday. And I was praying, and, and usually when, whenever I, like, I've kind of finished and wrapped up my, my sermon, I, I just drive and I, and I pray. I don't even listen to worship music. I just pray, and I pray for you. I pray for the message. I pray for anybody listening. And I was just driving through the mountains and kind of just intentionally getting lost. And all of a sudden, I felt like the Holy Spirit started downloading to me the amount of profound moments that the word of God has led me. The profound moments that the word of God has transformed me. The amount of moments that the word of God has comforted me. The amount of moments that I've gotten to sit with people and comfort them through the word of God. I was reminded of the time when our son was, was born and he was really struggling with life and he was in the NICU And I remember just standing over him and reading Psalm 139 over and over and over again. And fast forward four years later, my daughter is in the same situation in NICU, and I remember reading Psalm 139 over and over and over and over again and feeling the peace of God guard my heart and guard my mind. Sitting with my son this summer while he was about to go in for heart surgery, reading scripture. My dad's battle with cancer, our family sending back and forth scriptures to one another to encourage my dad and encourage my mother in this fight. The amount of times that me and my wife have sat on the couch in seasons where our marriage was really, really rough and really struggling, but still opening up the word of God and just believing the things that God had to say and saying, look, we don't know what's ahead of us, but at least we can trust for this moment that God is with us. The amount of times that I've sat with a mother as a youth pastor who just lost their child to suicide, sitting with a family before a funeral, saying, I I don't know what to say, but can, can we go to the Word of God? The amount of times I've sat with someone who's struggling with identity issues and feels so lost and in such despair and loving on them through the word of God. The amount of times that I've seen myself as a lost 16-year-old and again as a lost 21-year-old and then as a lost 27-year-old opening up this word of God in the quietness of my room and saying, God, please speak to me. I'm so lost. Can can I just tell you that the reason why we engage with this word is because this is a reminder that God is good. This word is a reminder that God is faithful. This word is a reminder that God has not left you. This is a reminder that God has not forsaken you, that God still goes before you. He stands behind you. He stands beside you. Can can I tell you that that's why we engage with the Word of God, to see that God is always doing something new, that God has compassion for you, that God has love for you, that God has joy for you, that God has peace and strength for you. That's why we open up the Word of God. It serves as a reminder of who God is and the love story that He's speaking directly to your situation. That, listen, God created you uniquely. You are like no other person on this planet. I don't care if you're an identical twin. You are like no one else on this planet. That God speaks to you uniquely because He created you uniquely. And so I just want to ask this question. Like, where have you been going and searching for answers in this season of life? Where have you been searching for answers? And have you searched the word of God yet? Listen, I, I, I know that you and your wife, your marriage is really difficult right now and you guys are considering divorce, but have you gone to the word of God yet? 
Have you searched the word of God? Have you allowed it to transform you and lead you? I know that you're sitting in a deep battle with addiction right now, but have you searched the word of God yet? I know that you're struggling with anxiety over and over and over again, but have you searched the word of God yet? I know you're confused with your purpose and what to do with life, but have you searched the word of God yet? Yes, Andrew, I have read the word of God, but no, have you searched it? Have you sat down and said, God, look at my heart, discern my thoughts. Lord, discern my attentions and my intentions. Lord, would you speak to me? Have you searched the word of God? Can I tell you something about this book? Listen, I'm so, I'll, I'll sit up here for another hour if you'd let me, okay? Because I believe in the power of this book. Listen, can, can I tell you that this book will be the most constant and consistent thing in your life? There is nothing in your life that is as constant as this book. Even church was taken away from us. The, con the consistency of church and meeting was taken. Community, meeting with people was taken, but the most consistent thing in your life will be this. Listen, can I tell you, people will change. Finances will change. Jobs will change. Politicians will change. Presidents will change. Things will change. But listen, can I tell you, Isaiah 48 says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Amen. Listen, what, what I, I, I've come to understand, the Bible, it can be really confusing, I understand. But the more I read, the more God speaks. The more I read, the more God begins to reveal to my heart. Listen, I believe that in 2021, God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in your life. But could you say, you know what, all my goals aside, I'm gonna seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and trust that all these things will be added to me. The title of this message, I waited till the end, but the title of this message is Year in Search. Stealing it from you, Google. Year in Search. Can this be the year that you search the Word of God like never before? Y'all can stand to your feet. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for everyone present today. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I just wanna ask one question to kick off your year right. You walked into this place, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you felt deeply in your soul, I have been searching and searching and searching around every corner and always coming up empty. I've searched every relationship, every substance, every career, everything that I know how but nothing has brought me the lasting fulfillment that I've been looking for. And all of a sudden, I stepped in this room today and you told me about this love story, which is the Bible. You told me about this Jesus Christ who can defend me, transform me, and guide me. And I wanna make him Lord of my life. You're here today and you wanna start a relationship with God for the first time ever, saying, Jesus, would you become Lord of my life at all locations? Would you slip up your hand? Amen. Amen, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus at all, all locations. God behind bars, lift those hands. Just in your own words, if that's you and you raise your hand, just begin to pray to God maybe for the first time. You don't have to articulate anything. Just say, God, I need you. Forgive me of my sins. I wanna put my faith and my hope in you. I believe that you went to the cross for me and died for me. I believe that you resurrected three days later and if I put my hope in you. I'll have life different, not only on this earth, but for eternity in heaven. God, I believe you're the only way to heaven. Just begin to pray to him. You don't have to say what I just said. Just talk to him. God, we love you so much. Thank you for giving us the greatest tool that we have, the word of God. And all God's people said, amen. Red Rocks Church, let's worship. Come on.